Hi, this is Liza Graves, and I'm here interviewing Ann Yangert. Did I pronounce that right? You did. All right. She is an employment law specialist partner at Bradley. And tell us a little bit about your background, and then I am going to ask you a few questions that I know a lot of business owners need to hear right now. Okay. I've been doing labor and employment work for about 30 years now. So I've been kind of on the front lines when the FMLA was first passed, when the ADA was first passed. Um, I represent companies of all sizes down to three or four or five people up to thousands of people. So I've been handling all of these kinds of questions pretty much nonstop for the last 30 years. But really for the for nonstop in the last about week. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay, so um I have a my first question is going to be I keep hearing about furloughing employees versus terminating employees. And I know I'm confused and a lot of my clients, I, I have about I don't know, you know, about five hundred uh, clients that are all small business owners and um, a lot of them you know, don't have many employees at all, and they're trying to figure out exactly what to do, but they don't want to do anything that harms their employee because they already know they're in a terrible position. Are Can you explain to us what the difference of that is? Sure. Um, sometimes people talk about a layoff, mm -hmm. and that's typically terminating more than one employee at a time. Um, and that's usually considered something that's fairly permanent that you're not gonna bring somebody back. Under some contracts, under some things you lay off people and you bring them back a little, uh, uh, at some point. Um, a furlough is really like a layoff, but you're trying to keep in touch with your employees. You, you can structure a furlough, the government furloughs people a lot of times, um, sometimes under an like a collective bargaining agreement, you could furlough people but it, a furlough looks a lot like a termination. <laughs> you can structure a furlough depending on your policies and your abilities to say, we're gonna furlough you so we're not gonna pay you because we don't have anything for you to do. Right. But we're gonna find a way maybe to continue or help to continue your health insurance or something like that. Now, health insurance continuation is all about your health insurance policy and what you're allowed to do under it. So you'd have to check with Blue Cross or whomever has that policy. But a furlough typically looks a little less um, permanent. We're looking at weeks or maybe a couple months instead of, I don't think I'm ever going to be able to bring this person back. It's, it's a if you furlough an employee, do they have the ability to get unemployment? All of the, um, well, all. We just published a blog post on this today. Oh, so great, okay. Go to the Bradley website under the Labor and Employment Insights. Um, we just published, we updated a, a post about unemployment and a lot of states have changed their rules so that um, someone who even takes some of this paid leave might be eligible, or if they have to um, uh, self-isolate, they might be eligible, even if they're not, you know, they, they might not be paid. You don't want to terminate them, but they're not making any money, and it's mm -hmm. really not their fault exactly. because they're sick or things like that. Mm -hmm. Unemployment is typically based on, did you leave your current employer um, for reasons that are not really your responsibility. That's what unemployment is for. So a lot of the states have said, we're gonna uh, eliminate the, the waiting period in some states. A lot of them have um, guidance that specifically says that COVID related furloughs or, or terminations are clearly um, covered. And so you can go to a state's I mean, you can just Google the state name and the um, unemployment and COVID and find a lot of good information. If you look at our blog post, we link to a lot of the states in our region. So you can look at their guidance on that. And 
um, for Bradley's region, that's pretty much, is that like DC down Southeast? Is that right? It's to the Southeast, all the way over to Texas. All the way over to Texas. Okay. All right. So with that part of it, then my question to you is next is, um, is there anything that companies may be doing right now to help employees that inadvertently is actually hurting them to be able to get benefits? Um, th there are two different kinds of um, kind of benefits that have come out recently. One is the unemployment benefit that the states are trying to make more available for people who are going to lose their jobs as a result of this, even temporarily. The other one is the emergency sick leave and the emergency FMLA that is aimed at providing some level of pay to someone who is either sick with COVID or who has to stay home to take care of somebody who's sick or their children are home and, and there's no childcare available. Um, it's unclear how all of those things, they were passed late Friday mm -hmm. or Thursday night. Right. Um, and so it's really unclear how that's gonna work. There are um, under at least one of them, under the um, emergency FMLA, there is a possible exemption um, that the Department of Labor will be able to provide for an employer that has fewer than 50 employees and providing this paid leave will jeopardize kind of the viability of the company. So that is out there. We are not sure how that will work. Right. Um, I would bet that it will be not, we can't provide anybody leave. It will be, if all of my people take it, I can't, I can't survive that. Right. Um, and it's also really going to depend if you don't have, if you were a company that can continue to work, can continue to provide some sort of services, that's one group to look at. The other are the people who, who are not going to, for the next two or three weeks or however long, um, the nature of their business, they cannot provide services. They can't do business. Um, and that's a real different place than somebody who thinks that in a week, I'm gonna be able to, to get back to it. Um, it's hard to tell. Now, the, that paid leave, those paid leave issues, they go into effect on April 2nd. So people, are, are concerned that if they don't do something before April 2nd, that they will find themselves re responsible for providing all kinds of paid leave. If you can't, and, and nobody knows how this will work. And, and of course, all the lawyers are afraid that what's gonna happen is you're gonna end up with, you know, lawyers at the tail end of this filing a bunch of lawsuits claiming that you didn't do something right under this. Yeah. I don't think that we can anticipate all of that and we're going to have to at some level just do our best to I think that employers who are sincere in their assessments um, who take actions um, for the best for the benefit of their employees and for their companies you know to see if we do this we cannot continue or if we don't do this um, will we aren't going to be able to continue those really sincere assessments which i think most people are doing yeah they I don't do. want to lay people off they don't want to get rid of people mm -hmm. um i think that looking at it um i mean if you don't have the money to pay somebody you don't have the money to pay somebody <laughs> that's the way it is i know that um some financial services providers are trying to make um funds more available in hopes that some of this will, will work itself out and there'll be some help. Both of the paid leave options in that have come out, the emergency sick leave and the emergency FMLA, both of them have a provision that you um, get a, a, a dollar for dollar credit against your um, unemployment taxes. I think it's the unemployment taxes. So, so you will recoup that going forward 
on a quarterly basis. If you stay now, in business. <laughs> so I know. So it's it's not yeah. perfect, but it, it is something that says, um, one, the government doesn't isn't going to be able to, to do everything right now. They're kind of counting on a float from employers and, and will repay you at some level is what they're trying to do. Yeah. And then, of course, with the legislation that's being looked at right now, then that would be an entirely different situation. Of Correct. Bailout. Correct. So. I, I almost said bailout and I understand <laughs> not a bailout because small business has done nothing wrong here. Right. This is actually um, keeping our economy going and keeping 90 million people employed. And, and I do think that that's also 90 million, good. nine, nine million. I, I may have got, I have so many figures in my head right now. <laughs> Sorry about that. Well, and I do think that that's the thing to remember is that you want to, you want to think about how to keep people employed um, yeah. and, and do your best for that. Sometimes that might look like reducing people's hours. It, you know, if you have work or there's some level of work you can do so that you, you pull back on everybody so everybody's not getting what they would have, but maybe we can get through it that way. The big thing to remember there is if you're gonna reduce somebody's hours, if they're an hourly paid employee, and a, a non-exempt employee, you can just, they don't work as many hours, they don't get paid, except for the hours they work. Right. If they're an exempt employee and they get the same salary every week, um, you have to, tell them ahead of time. You can only change that moving forward and reduce okay. their, um, their salary in that way. And then there's a, you can't reduce it. And I, I can't, I never, it's a brand new threshold for me. I think it's $684 a week is the, is the threshold for that. Um, so you can't reduce it below that, but you could also make somebody an hourly employee. <laughs> So you can oh. put everybody to hourly if, mm -hmm. if that's what you need to do. Um, you, you can't reduce anybody below a minimum wage. Um, right. So just keep those things in mind. Okay. Um, so are there any other questions that you are getting hit with right now that seem to be the same question over and over again that you could tell us about? Um, mostly probably aren't the ones that your folks are really worrying about. I'm getting a lot of questions about um, when can somebody return to work if they've been sick? Yeah. What are we allowed to ask? Things like that. There's a lot of guidance out there. The EEOC has just put out some new guidance on can you take somebody's temperature if they're returning to work? <laughs> um, and they say, yes, you can. So you're allowed to. Okay, that's good um, to know. That's good to know. Um, can you require them to have a doctor's note to return? The problem is that it might be hard to get a doctor's note for a while. And yeah. so you might just need to talk with your employees and figure out, are they, are they really better? Are, are they ready to come back to work? Um, are they, have they been symptom free for 24 hours without medication is I think the, the buzzwords. But um, that's a, a kind of a different issue. Um, mm -hmm trying to think of if there's anything else specifically. The, the unemployment has been a big question. People don't want to do something that's going to cause people to not get unemployment. And in almost every instance that I've looked at under the state laws, furloughing somebody would not, would not prevent them from uh, getting unemployment. Also, in some states, and you have to look at the state, a significant reduction in um, hours could um, put somebody in a position where they are eligible for um, partial benefits. Okay. So even then, but check your state law. Yeah. All right. That is good to know. So if um, someone is needing employment uh, law help right now, obviously they can turn to Bradley. What if someone can't afford a firm like Bradley? You guys are amazing, but some people are like, I, I just had, I have zero revenue coming in right now, but I need to make the right choices. Where can they look? You know, you can look on our website. Anybody can access um, our blogs and our um, COVID website. So there's a lot of information. We're not the only people putting it out there. We, we do it better, I like to think, yeah. but um, I'm not going to not gonna throw rocks at everybody who's really, really putting a lot of resources out there. The other um, 
you know, I think that that's the first thing to do is just really look to see um, the resources that are out there and they're not hard to find um, on the unemployment. Like I said, all of the states, their their um, do Department of Industrial Relations or Department of Employment and Workforce, they're, they're, every them, they all call each other things, different things, but um, you can find those um, that information pretty easily. Um, but like I said, I would like check out our website. It's got a lot of good information mm -hmm. available. All right. Well, I'll make sure to put a link under this video um, when okay. it, when we get it published uh, to that. Hey, Anne, thank you so much. Okay. Thank stay, you. Stay healthy. You too. You too. Alrighty. Good luck. Bye-bye.